There are many ancient relics strewn across our planet, which are unimaginably ancient. Hidden from inquisitive minds, often by a variety of factors, millennia of undergrowth, conspiratorial bodies, or even personal perceptions of historical truth. However, there lay a far more interesting, far more inspiring tale resting just beneath the surface of this illusion, just waiting to flourish. Previously, we covered some of the amazing discoveries made by a man known as Professor Potini. In particular, his extremely peculiar stone found in 1990 within a diamond mine in Sierra Leone within West Africa. It is known as the Sky Stone. Numerous specialists have analyzed the stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen, with a color source which is, as yet, unknown. Unbeknownst to many, however, is that Professor Angelo Pitoni had many strings to his bow. He was a geologist, a botanist, discoverer of emerald mines, an expert in the precious stone lapis lazuli, along with many other talents. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, we feel his actual defining discovery, his legacy left upon the unexplained mystery history of our planet, can be found elsewhere. He did in fact, during his lifetime of exploration, indeed discover something unique upon our planet. Something undoubtedly important, immensely ancient, and quite possibly, a last remaining remnant of an unimaginably old civilization which was once found upon the African continent. Found during his ventures deep within Sierra Leone, West Africa. The Lady of Mali. He examined the land at the foot of her mountainous form, and according to his calculations, the stone monument was indeed man-made and carved well over 12,000 years ago. Reaching an astonishing 1,500 meters in the air, it is an image of a woman's figure hewn from an entire face of Mount Lore. Predictably, due to modern academia and the entrenched, paradynamically cast spell, Upon many modern fields of study, the only explanation that can be ascertained for this clearly man-made, highly ancient artwork is that it is merely a coincidental, natural formation. In an interview with journalist Carmen Mikado, Pitoni explained that the statue is located to the north of the city of Conakry and close to the country's border with Mali. The geologist estimates the Lady of Mali to be some 20,000 years old. This concluded through the observations of displaced motions within a natural rock fall he found within the lady's form. He also spoke of caves in the area, which contained mummies, guarded by the locals, who he claimed rumored of their, quote, Atlantean origins. Unfortunately, Professor Potini died in 2009, so any other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains and will undoubtedly live on for many years to come. Just who could have built the Lady of Mali? Is she really a 12,000-year-old relic left by a pre-flood, pre-cataclysmic civilization? Or merely a natural formation? Do you believe an opinion based on a historical assumption? Or one based upon explorations, investigations, resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide.
Affectionately known as the Badlands Guardian, it is located near Medicine Hat, southeast Alberta, Canada. The feature is clearly of an uncanny likeness to that of a past Native American chief. Viewed from the air, the feature has been said by nearly all whom explore it to resemble a human head wearing a full traditional headdress with his face gazing precisely westward. Although the chosen argument for its existence is it being the result of heavy rainfall, subsequently a groundslip formation, those who use such dismissive techniques have forgotten to mention or deliberately ignore the formation's longevity and lack of morphing due to geological activity, a continual direct contradiction to these claims of geological culpability. There is a good reason we share and indeed find such curious features intriguing. We have for a long time explored many enigmatic possible ancient landmarks, many terrestrial and many much further afield. Denied, dismissed on sight due to cognitive dissonance, not only due to modern paradigm, an inability to time travel back to their date of construction and photograph said undertaking. Yet most persuasive, the unthinkable, unimaginable, mind-boggling feats that, if real, many of these now classified earthworks would have taken to achieve. There are few fields of study, in our experience, which causes such a divisive reaction and difference in opinions within antiquarian research, as there is within the field of ancient, questionably possible pareidolia. We recently shared an ancient mountain known as Pedra de Gavia, and although the claim faces erosion, regardless of geological or of artificial origins, is in the most severe final stages of natural entropy, with this eventual likeness fading into a geological feature to no longer distinguishably recognizable as a possible pre-Columbian face in the near future. We cited and shared other research, the geological evidence of the face's surface seemingly cut later, being far more recently exposed to the elements. Yet, regardless, many simply dismiss the feature due to its lack of any visually distinguishable features, which, regardless of this site's possible natural origins, is a fate bestowed upon many of the truly oldest legacies of a lost world here on our planet. It must be noted that we do not claim to know these curious, often enormous landmark or stone-cut supposed monument or earthworks' true origins. But the evidence to support it as indeed a possible achievement is enormous. The Nazca Lines, Darren Kuyu, the wonders of Egypt, the astonishing acoustic marvels of the caverns created in Malta, and so on. Not to mention the countless demonstrative feats, evidence of their capability to indeed work and eventually transport stones of mammoth proportions molded into blocks and astonishingly ancient displays of decorative artworks found all over the world. Thus, regardless of the dismissals, we find the Badlands Guardian highly compelling.